make it very quick so we have some time for um, question and answer. Okay, so um, a lot of us actually use um, the internet. Um, predominantly we use Facebook and Google. And but I don't think that so many of us would actually spend the time on the internet pretty much the same way as this woman does. Because um, this woman, when she goes to the internet, she looks for and solves crime stories. Um, because she thinks that she's involved in those crime stories when in fact she's got nothing to do with those crime stories. And then when a helicopter flies over her house, she thinks it's the police officers looking after her. And that soon these police officers would take her to the coldest place on earth, probably Russia. And then she will eventually die. Um, this woman, um, she does that on a daily basis, pretty much on a daily basis, because she thinks she's pretends most wanted. And uh, essentially, she's suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. Her name is Erica Crompton, and just like most of us here, she's a mental health worker. Um, she's sharing her stories, her struggles about paranoid schizophrenia through Facebook, through um, Twitter, through YouTube. And of course, she also writes her own blog. And although I don't, um, I don't have lived experience, experience of mental health, I do see the power within mental health, um, within mental health blogs, within um, Twitter. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So I know it has been mentioned a lot of times today, but. For those of you who's not into blogging, I'll just have, let's just have a quick look at what, what we actually mean by a blog. So a blog is a website which gets updated on a pretty much regular basis. And the things that, the contents that we put in a blog, that's what we call posts, or simply um, blog posts. And a lot of times when I mention the word blog to people who are not familiar about it, they say, how is it any different from your website? The thing that um, makes a website and a blog different from each other is the way the content is updated. Um, I chose um, this website, this is Apple website, this is a company website. Their website is pretty much static. And what I mean by static is that it doesn't get updated on a regular basis. Um, when you visit it six days ago, six months ago, six years ago, it's pretty much a space where you would um, see the products, the services. Whereas a blog, um, it gets updated on a regular basis. Um, so for example, get site um, with Fraser, he updates his website every two, two weeks, I suppose. Um, my blog, Cypress, I, I update it pretty much every day, because um, that's my source of income. I'm, I would say I'm a full-time blogger, I earn from, from blogging. And, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's the main difference from with, with a website and, and a blog. The, um, the, the frequency of updating its content. And of course, I would also like to emphasize that blogging is not just all about creating content. It's also about um, creating connections with other bloggers. Pretty much like what we're doing now. Uh, we're trying to network. I know this is a very, it's a very intimate event, but um, just like I was talking to ladies earlier, and she said she hasn't come across with um, an event especially that dedicated especially for mental health bloggers. You probably haven't heard of it. And I think um, we, we, we did not really design this event to be big. Um, we, we, what we'd like to, do, uh, to have an event which is intimate, more personalized, because we're talking about a very delicate issue. And if you're talking about a very de delicate issue and it's, you have a bigger platform, you have a bigger audience, you're losing the, um, the, the personal element. And so that's what we're trying to achieve with this event. And hopefully uh, we would hear more personal story, there's, there's a human element on our future event. So yeah, I was talking with you um, earlier, yeah, yeah, there's no mental health event so far. So um, we're, we're quite proud of what we have achieved, although this is a small event. So yeah. Um, being a blogger is about creating connections. Um, more so that you are a mental health blogger. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very important issue. Just like what uh, Max has said, every one of us would be um, struggling with mental health issues. Um, so, some of us would definitely come across with of people who have uh, mental health issues. And of course, 
um, for those who are not familiar about the blogging industry, you could blog about anything that you want. Um, there's practically a lot of, of a lot of genre that you could blog about. Some people choose to blog about travel. Some people choose to blog about um, food, fashion, or lifestyle. Earlier, I was talking with um, sorry, <laughs> yeah, I was talking with Gita, and then um, she told me that her daughter would like to be a blogger. Um, she had, she had um, fashion um, ideas on YouTube, yeah, like Zoella. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So you, you could choose a, you, you could choose to blog about um, about all sorts of things, but here in this room we choose to blog about mental health. So I'd like to walk you through my journey how I became a mental health blogger. So I've been blogging since 2005. Um, when I started blogging, it was um, basically just a space to share my opinions, my experiences, just like most bloggers. You just share what's, what's, what's happening with your life. And then in 2010, um, before I met my husband, I was a solid traveler. Um, I loved going to different countries on my own and I chronicled it. And then eventually I got bored with it. Um, just like most like usually um, when we start a blog, like first two years, we have the spark, we have the enthusiasm, and then after a few years, we just lose it. Um, so I lost, I lost interest with the travel blog and with the personal blog. And then I decided to come here to move in, to move in the UK to do uh, my master's degree. I decided to do a research project on expressive writing. Um, essentially, expressive writing is the idea that um, those people who keep a journal, it improves their well-being. Um, it was an idea proposed um, in the early 1980s. Um, I'll go back to expressive writing later on. And then, when I was doing my research project, I came across with a lot of mental health blogs, and so that inspired me to create my own mental health blog, and so my blog, Sacrage, was born in 2014. Now, uh, when we talk about blogs, um, we maybe think it's just articles written in a fairly conversational style, informal, but Blogs actually come in three forms. So there's textual blogs, there's video blogs, um, those that you see on YouTube, you, you call them blogs. And then there's, of course, micro blogs, um, Twitter, Tumblr, and then LinkedIn. Those are micro blogs. Now, um, when it comes to mental health, um, these are the most popular mental health blogs. And I use the word popular because um, they're the most widely visited um, mental health blogs, um, Psychology Today, Psych Central, and BPS Research Digest. They're so popular that when you Google something related to mental health, chances are you would end up on this website more than you would end up on academic journals. And that's, and that's the power of blogging. Because um, we live in, in a world that we want to access everything on the internet. So if you access everything on the internet and then you come across with blogs, Especially with mental health, that's that's the power of mental. Um, that's the power of blogging. So, um, Psychology Today it was founded in 1967, and for four years it was owned by the American Psychological Association. It gets about 27 million monthly visitors in a year. Just to give you an idea, um, the University of Oxford, you would think it's a, a reputable website, it's a reputable source. They get about 12 million monthly visitors. Um, 12 million monthly visitors. So that's that. They're even more popular than um, a university in the UK. And then um, Psych Central. It was founded in 1995. They were recognised as one of the 50 best websites in 2008 by Times Magazine, and they get about 6 million monthly visitors. And then um, Research Digest, um, this is run by the British Psychological Society. It was launched in 2005. They were recognized as the best psychology of, um, blog by the Research Blogging Awards in 2010, and they get more than half a million monthly visitors. But of course, um, there's a mixed bag of mental health blogs. It's just not limited to those mainstream blogs. So, that's why earlier this year we launched a project called Psychridge Index. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to recognize 
mental health target, small mental health targets like ourselves. So if you um, a mental health target, you want to be included in that index. I left my business card on your goodie bags, just get in touch with me, send me an email, and I'll happily include you on that list. Um, yeah, so what, we, what we're trying to do is just give them a bit of recognition, because um, it takes a lot of time to write a blog post, to, to, to maintain a blog. Um, I don't know about you, but as a, as a blogger, it takes me about 45 minutes to an hour just for a 700 word article, and that um, includes um, checking the spelling, making sure that they run well on SEO, and the pictures, the images. Um, I had a chat last night with Erin. Um, yeah, I told her that it's really important. Social media, I hate to say this as a social media manager, but social media just gives you about 1% of your traffic. If you really want to have a powerful website, a powerful blog, don't waste your energy, um, don't focus your energy on, on social media, focus your energy on SEO, because people do not discover things on social media. People discover things through Google. So if you, if you want to drive traffic on your website, focus on SEO. And I'm not trying to blog, um, brag, but my website gets about 50 to 100,000 um, a month. And that's enough for me to work from home. So um, I think, yeah, that's, 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 that's my message. If you, want to be, um, if you want to be a successful blogger, discover things about SEO. And then, of course, there's video blogs. Um, earlier, you've seen a live episode of um, Sackridge Podcast. And of course, we also have your phrases, also has his get site. Um, it's also a video blog. And of course, some people do, do not have the luxury of time of managing video blogs. I don't know how long it takes you to um, do an episode, probably. It, um, but I, I suppose mine's a little bit different from yours because I can uh, record multiple yeah. videos at once and then edit it. So it probably takes about, for editing, it probably takes about an hour, hour and a half. An hour and a half, fun. yeah. So it's pretty much like writing an article, really. So, but, but usually your blog post is about 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so exactly. 20 minutes and it takes you an hour to prepare. Yeah. Um, we don't have Mandy here, but she's a microblogger. Um, every Thursday or every Wednesday, she um, she uses hashtag like empowerment hour. hour. Um, she's into um, diversity, female empowerment. Um, yeah, she she always puts a chat. So that's also another form of blogging. Um, Earlier I mentioned to you about expressive writing. So again, expressive writing, this is the idea um, proposed by James Pennebeck in the late 1980s. Um, yeah, like what I said earlier, um, he found out that those people who keep a journal, it improves their well-being. Because it's a form of self-expression, it's a form of sharing your thoughts. Now, now fast forward in the internet era, it's very rare that you would find across people who actually keep a physical journal. Um, now, if you're expressive and if you want to do a form of expressive writing, you do it through a form of blog. And we're, we're actually in, a, in an era now where we try to share it with the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of the days that we actually keep the journal and keep things that are happening just to ourselves. So we, we love to share it with other people. So yeah, that was it in 2004. Um, um, blogs became popular, um, there were already um, professional bloggers coming from their blog. And there was also the time that bloggers were also um, um, executed, especially in, um, in religious countries or politically challenged countries. So that's just one element of my lecture about blogging. I'd like to draw your attention to the next element, um, mental health. And these are some statistics that I've sourced from Mental Health Foundation. It's a mental health charity. According to them, mental health and behavioral problems are reported to be the primary drivers of disability worldwide, causing over 40 million years of disability in 20 to 29 year olds. Another statistic that they've got is that it is estimated that one in six people in the past week experienced a common mental health problem. 
And mental health problems are one of the main causes of the overall disease burden worldwide. And major depression is thought to be the second leading cause of disability worldwide and a major contributor to the burden of, um, of suicide and heart disease. So um, these are horrible statistics, um, especially talking about mental health. And one, one, the simple message that I'm trying to say is that um, blogs are very popular. When you, uh, like what I said earlier, when you search something mental health related online, um, you would end up on a blog, followed by um, newspapers, news websites, and then followed by academic journal. So um, we, that, that's, that's how we spend so much time on blogs, on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on your, on your um, mainstream blogs. So I think as a blogger, it is a responsibility to address mental health issues, to share stories, and um, just, just to network just like this. And um, I'd like to share this um, statement from my another mental health charity. Um, they said that blogs and mental health stories can show that people with mental health problems are cared about, understood, and listened. Another statement from the American Psychological Association, they said that patients, caregivers, and even psychologists are using blogs and other social media to help each other and themselves. And of course, what are the benefits of blogging? Number one, it's a form of self-expression. Just like the, um, because I'm, I'm quite introvert. Um, when I was young, I'd rather spend time with myself. So um, I found, I found blogging as, um, it's, it's very therapeutic for me because that's, that's how I make sense of what's happening with my life, so my thoughts, opinions, ambitions. So, yeah, that, I think that's, that's, um, that's one of the reasons why we blog. Because um, it's, it's better to express yourselves um, in written words rather than, I, I don't know about it, but rather than talking to other people. Because sometimes when you talk to other people, you feel that you, will be, you are being judged. Whereas if you just keep it on a journal, if you keep it on a blog, um, it's more liberating, it's more empowering. Yeah, so that's, that's one um, benefit of blogging. Another is, um, of course, there's a psychosocial element of blogging. Um, according to this research, um, um, blogging social integration, um, basically if you blog, it promotes your social well-being, um, especially in terms of perceived social support. And when I talk about the benefits of blogging in terms of perceived social support, what's that? <laughs> TV will turn off in <laughs> three seconds. Um, I always like to share this um, blog, cancerpills.org. Um, what they do is they invite people who are suffering with cancers and um, to share their videos. And I think um, that's a very powerful way to show this the psychosocial element involving blogging. Of course, it's not going to cure cancer, um, you know, sharing videos, but you know, it's comforting to know that other people are sharing um, what you're going through. And that's the same with, um, with blogging. If you're sharing a platform, sharing, um, allowing people to share their own stories, um, the struggles that they're going through, it gives them a sense of, um, Connectivity it gives them a sense of um, I'm, I'm not on my own. Other people are also experiencing it. Yes, that's why we're also trying to do this in Cypress. Um, we, we aside from um, regular blog articles that we publish, we also allow people to publish their own stories. Um, Max has been a prolific contributor to Cypress. I think you've uh, submitted about ten articles in a month. Um, that's the most um, number of mental health stories that I've uh, received from one person. And I couldn't thank you enough for that. And um, you know what? Um, I, I get emails from other people thanking me that, um, of course, it's not, it's not going to improve their situation right away. But it's comforting to know that um, I'm not the only one who suffered from schizophrenia, or I'm not the only person who suffered from depression or anxiety. So, yeah, we, we invite people to um, share their mental health stories in Cypress. Um, you can remain anonymous if you want. I know it's, it, it takes a lot of courage to share your own mental health story. 
And then, of course, uh, another benefit of plugging is that it could supplement internet-based interventions. It's quite unheard of today that a lot of counselors, a lot of therapists, they do actually the, they do the sessions on Skype. Um, who knows, maybe in 10, 20 years, we would have um, blood therapy. Because expressive writing, it was, it was pioneered in the 1980s. And by 1990s, by 2000s, you would already have psychotherapies prescribing um, expressive writing as a form of therapy. And then, of course, more importantly, um, this is the, uh, what, what blogging is doing, mental health education. It, it educates us about what, what is OCD, what is, what is schizophrenia. And I think that the more we talk about it in our own little ways, whether through videos, or whether through articles, or whether through social media, it, it, um, it addresses stigma, so we don't make fun of other people just because they have, they have mental health issues. And then, um, yeah, I just want to go back to what I've told you. Um, when you Google something mental health related, you would end up in, you, chances are you would be reading a blog. And I think that um, that's, that's an important thing for bloggers for, for bloggers to realize like, how powerful, how powerful um, blog as a platform is. Because let's say there's a new research about dementia. Um, of course, it will be pub published in academic journals. It will be published on the websites of, of universities. But how many people will actually get to read it? Um, if, you, if, you want, if you want to have a maximum reach, if you want a lot of people to read what What's the latest on dementia? You have to you have to write it in a fairly uh, conversational style, in a fairly informal style. Uh, I can't remember who mentioned it earlier. Yeah, but I think it was Bernie and Richard. Yeah, um, academic journals they have it's almost like an exclusive area. You know, like academics, researchers, and I, I don't blame them because um, that's that's their profession. They, but they have their own jargon. They have their own um, way of talking, and sometimes. That would actually make, make the discourse exclusive. And, you know, um, academics and researchers, um, they need to learn about the latest research about mental health issues. But more than that, we, um, people who are struggling with mental health issues, families who, who know people who are suffering with mental health issues, they need, to, they need to learn about that. And the way they access those um, latest research is through blogging. So that's why in Cypress, we invite researchers and academics. For instance, we've got these two researchers from um, Staffordshire University. We invite them to um, rewrite the recently published article in, in a blog style. Um, so that it becomes more accessible, it becomes more democratic. And then, of course, um, blogging could also be introduced um, as, a, as a blended learning initiative, you could also add, if you're a teacher, you could also include it um, in your classroom strategy. Um, last July, I was in Thailand, I, I attended a conference. It was mainly for teachers, and obviously when it was my turn to um, deliver my research, I told them that, um, yeah, coming from a blogging background, um, blogging would also be implemented inside the classroom. Uh, for instance, there's a blog called theedgeblogger.com. Um, it is basically a directory of blogs around the world with different levels. And yeah, you can just you can just see how creative teachers are at, at implementing um, blogs inside the classroom. Of course, um, blogging is not a perfect platform. Um, it has its own um, disadvantages. Number one, it has um, the potential for radicalization. Um, this is especially true if you're a video blogger. Um, if you go to YouTube or Daily Motion, so easy to find um, ideologies, far left, far left, or far right ideologies. And what I mean by blogger is not just a one-off. It's a series of. If they have a channel. They have a dedicated channel, and it's a series of blogs that. Um, with a recurring theme that they do it on a regular basis, like every two weeks it's the same theme. So, um, yeah, you could also be radicalized by watching blogs. 
And of course, just by reading textual blog, um, this is a, um, a new story from a newspaper in Singapore. So there was a, a man who was radicalized um, by reading blogs. And of course, um, blogging could be a platform for pedophiles. Of course, um, anyone could blog. It only takes well, um, an hour to set up your own blog. Um, you can blog it. You can create your own blog through WordPress. And so um, there's an really increasing number of bloggers. And if, especially if you're a lifestyle blogger and if you're a child, you share a lot of things, sensitive information about yourself. So um, there's pedophile street, you reveal your address, your, your age, and where you're going. And then um, another thing is that there are also blogs which promote suicidal self-injury. Um, I don't know if you're aware of pro Anna and pro Mia website. Basically, these are pro anorexia pro bulimia website. Um, you call them Thinkspiration blog. You can easily find them on on Google, on YouTube, um, they, they give tips on how to lose weight. Um, that's fine if, if, if that's really your, if you really decided that that's how you want to take care of your body. Um, but if you're like 13 or 12, um, that's, that's quite um, detrimental. Um, this is another woman, I'm not judging her, but um, this is an active um, video blogger. She advocates one meal a day. Uh, it's quite um, it's quite dangerous if you're 11, if you're 12 year old. I'm, I'm not promoting her, but um, let's just listen to her. I don't know. So hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, so what we did um, a video today talking about intermittent fasting and um, OMAT, which is one meal a day, and. I thought I'd give it a trial a couple of months ago. So I've been doing OMAD for about two months. Um, one meal a day um, in the evening times. And I just wanted to sort of share with you my experience. Now, I'm eating the same sort of food that I would eat normally on my sort of, you know, vegan, highly warm. Yeah, we, 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 we want to go through it. I'm just giving you an idea that there's so many bloggers out there and they have their own ideologies, they have their own agenda. And it's the same for mental health blogs. You would also come across with um, video blogs which are um, saying that um, blogs and video blogs, they're actually glamorizing mental health issues. That's why you, um, some people who are actually not suffering with depression or with anxiety, um, they, they're more confident to, to tell their families or friends that they've had it. Because um, they think it makes them cool and they have lots of Instagram followers. And um, the key thing is that these um, content creators, it's not just a one-off, it's, it's a series. Um, they do it on a weekly basis and you can see there's actually ads on it, they earn money from it. And then, of course, um, blogging could also be a platform for online instability. Um, this is especially true for Twitter or for Facebook. You become rich with other people simply because you don't see them. Um, you're just hiding under a Twitter handle or Facebook, Facebook group. I'm sure we, um, as a blogger, especially if you're active on social media, at one time you would have experienced it. I do, I do get a lot, especially um, I'm managing social media. <coughs> I just get it today. <laughs> yeah, and of course, just like any other platform, it's inherently risky. Um, you could be accused of um, plagiarism. You could be accused of um, co copyright issues. I'm, I'm not going to come as holier than thou. Uh, I, have, I had copyright issues in my early years of blogging. I've learned from them. And also, because I'm, I'm trying to capitalize on my blog with organizing events, it came up with a lot of hassles. Um, uh, Fraser has been witness to it. Um, I, I've, I've taken someone to court. Um, it's all, it's all part me. of being a blogger. So, um, uh, yeah, so if you want to be a blogger, you have to be, just like any other profession, you have to be, I think you, you have to be sure that's really what you want to do. And then, uh, what 
what would I like to see as um, uh, with plugin, with mental health plugin? Um, like what I've said earlier, it's a, it's a powerful platform. It's still on its early stages, but um, hopefully um, we would become more responsible bloggers. Um, like what Benny and Richard said earlier, um, we have to be clear that although it's opinion based, it's factual, it's objective, it's based on academic research. And um, also if, you're, if you are earning money from your blog, you have to be clear about that. Um, I'm, not hiding, I'm not hiding from other people that I'm earning from my blog, I do publish sponsored posts. And uh, like what I mentioned, I do review books. Um, in exchange, of course, for, for a fee. I do attend conferences in exchange for a free ticket to go to your conference. So you have to be clear about your, um, you have to be clear about your, your blog, your agenda. And that, that's the same for uh, YouTube um, content creators. Um, it's, it's not always says that they're wearing a shirt with a brand. Um, they're wearing it for a reason. It's not, um, it's not, it's not a coincidence that they're holding a mark with a brand. They're doing it for a reason. And that's the same with me. Um, the, 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 the widgets, the ad placements that you see on my blog, it's not a coincidence. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm quite clear with that with uh, my bloggers. Um, of course, it, it, costs, it costs money to run a blog, especially if, if you have a .com domain and not just a, a WordPress domain. So you have to sustain that. Money has to come from somewhere, um, but I don't, I don't, um, I don't publish articles which are obviously if it's if it's about hatred or if it's trying to um, promote certain ideologies which I'm not comfortable with. I don't publish that. <coughs> and then I'd like to see blogging um, treated as a discipline. I'd like to see more research done about blogging, like what I mentioned to you earlier. Um, expressive writing started in the 80s, and it's treated as a form of psychotherapy now. And like what I've told you, um, nobody keeps a journal now. We spend our time blogging. If you want to express yourself through writing, you do it through writing. So I think more research should be done about um, how we benefit psychologically and how it, how it affects our well-being by blogging. Um, not, not just by reading blogs, but actually creating blogs, how, how it affects our mental health. And I'm pretty sure that um, there are people out there who are struggling with mental health stories that um, they would have benefit, benefited from it, uh, from blogging one way or another. And lastly, I'd just like to give some tips if you want to create your own blog. I understand most of you here wouldn't be needing these tips because you're probably bloggers yourself. Um, so you have to set your short-term and long-term goals. What are you trying to achieve with your blog? Um, is it just a platform to share your own mental health stories or would you like to be um, recognized as a professional blogger and quit your day job? And of course, get a domain name. Um, it doesn't matter really what domain name it, it is, um, but the shorter the better. Um, a lot of people ask me what the sacrage means. Um, it actually stands for Sacrage Registry, because when I started it, it was just basically profiles of people whose backgrounds are in psychology and mental health. And then later on, it evolved into articles and then podcasts, and then later on, organizing events like this. And then choose a platform. There's so many platforms. Of course, the most popular one is WordPress. Um, I personally recommend WordPress if you want to start your own blog, because it's so user-friendly. Um, Wix, it's also user friendly, but I think it's more expensive to do it than Wix. And um, it's quite slow. Um, Wix, when you go to the website, they really try to attract you to sign up. Um, it's so eye catchy, the sounds so refreshing. But when you have lots of articles and you try to update it on a, on a regular basis, Wix tends to be slow. It, it, it really loads, loads slow. And then Wix is pretty much like Wix. And then, of course, have a content plan. Um, I have to update my, my blog every day. I have five articles in a day because I'm a full-time blogger and I earn money from my blog, so I have to update on a regular basis. Um, but you have to be consistent when, when you want to do your blog so your audience know um, it's coming. Like Fraser, you, you're quite consistent when you update your video blogs. Like you update it every two weeks. 
So it's not just like random day I want blood today. That's fine if you are, if you just, if, if it's just for yourself. But if you want to be a professional blogger, if you want to be nominated in UK Blogger Wars, <laughs> uh, you have to be consistent. I guess shameless plugging, you put something on your goodie bag. Um, vote for us, wink wink. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just like to leave you with these thoughts. Um, ideas are important um, because they inspire change, but ideas don't just come out of the blue. Um, it's conversations that generate ideas, and that's what blogging is all about. It's about creating conversations. It doesn't matter whether it's this mental health blog or travel blog. Um, it's a platform that aims to create conversations. <laughs> and uh, I'll happily take your questions along with the rest of the speakers, Arian, Max, and Fraser. We can sit here just like we should have done.